morning, church. Thank you for joining us this morning. Let's, uh, let's stretch out, get a big yawn in, get our cup of coffees. Let's gather our families. Maybe if you're home alone, maybe if you have some pets, let's gather them too. Let's praise Jesus this morning. Here we go. Let's sing, What Can Wash? What can wash away my sin? Sing it at home. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. Mother's Day, by the way, for all the moms out there, uh, especially all the moms who've raised me. Happy Mother's Day. And uh, if you have your mother with you, if she's uh, across the country or in your home, or maybe with the Lord, uh, let's remember all of our mothers this morning, and uh, let's continue to praise Jesus.
Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me. Sorry, no one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Anna. Welcome to Hollywood Community Church. We are so happy you're worshiping with us today. I am Brett. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Hollywood Community Church. I'm Kelly. This is Brad, and we're so happy you're worshiping with us today. Before we go any further, we want to say happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day to all the moms and those who are like moms hanging with us today. 
That's right. If you're new here to Hollywood Community Church, we'd love to know that you're attending online. So go to our website, www.ourhcc.org, and fill out our Connect card. We would love nothing more than to reach out to you and your family and say, how can we love on you guys, and how can we serve you guys this week? So please do that for us. Yeah, so in the spirit of Mother's Day, we thought we would have a little contest for all you moms out there. All you have to do to participate is comment in the Facebook chat or YouTube chat, wherever right. you're watching, if the question applies to you. We're going to go through the chat to find the winners. We'll notify you, and your gift card will be in the mail very soon. Are you ready? First question. First question is, we are looking for the newest mom. So put the age of your child into the chat, whether on Facebook or YouTube, and we would love to recognize and honor the newest mom. Yeah, second one. We want to recognize that veteran mom, the mom who is seasoned, who has the wisdom, who is there to help all of the new moms. So it might take you out of your comfort zone, but we need you to put your age, mom, okay? We won't share it with anybody. We promise we'll delete it after we go through That's it. Right. But we are looking for the oldest mom to honor. All right, here is the very last question. We want to recognize the mom who has the most kids watching this service right now. So however many kids you have, type that into the chat. We want to see the most kids watching this service with you. Yep, there you are. Good luck. We can't wait to recognize you. And one more time, we just want to say happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. This morning, I'm here with the Gunsit family. And uh, we have the privilege this morning of dedicating little Ella Grace. And so I want to take just a moment, introduce them. The Gunsett family have been members of our church for, for several years and been actively involved. And so this is Julio and Jeanette. And then we have Jaden, Giovanni, Jeremiah, and this is Ella Grace. And today they're dedicating Ella Grace. I believe she will be six months old today on Sunday, right? And so um, I would remind Mind you guys that we don't just dedicate the baby, but it's a family dedication. And so you guys this morning are dedicating yourselves, as you've already done with your other three, but dedicating yourselves to raise her up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Is that right? Yes. Let me read a passage of scripture. Psalm 127 says this, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. I love that. The fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. And certainly God has filled your quiver with uh, four <laughs> wonderful kids, and we rejoice with you today. So let's have a word of prayer. And congregation, I'd ask you to pray with me as we pray for them. And uh, let's pray not only for little Ella Grace, but for this family as well. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful family. And God, you know how much they mean to us. And, and Lord, thank you for the way that you bless them with four beautiful children. And today, they present Ella Grace to you. Lord, she certainly is a gift from God. And we thank you so much for her. So this morning, we pray, Lord, as they raise her up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, that at an early age, she would understand the gospel and that she would give her heart and life to Jesus. We pray that you'd keep her healthy. We pray that you'd keep her safe. And God, we just pray that you would use her to advance your kingdom. Once again, thank you for this wonderful family. And Lord, be with Julio and Jonette as they raise these kids up to be arrows to be servants of Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. This morning we have a certificate that we just want to give you. It's a baby dedication certificate along with some other gifts. So we just want you to know how much we love you guys and how much we appreciate you. And Ella, I sure wish I could hold you. When we get done with all of this, we'll set a date where I can just hold you. All right? God bless you guys. 
As we come to this offering moment, we want to say thank you to each of you that have been faithful in your tithes and offering. It allows us to continue the great work that God is doing through Hollywood Community Church. And so there's several different ways that you can continue to be faithful. You can give through mailing it in. You can also give through our website at www.ourhcc.org. You can also give through our text to give option. And lastly, you can give through our church app where you just open the app, hit the give option, and you'll be able to remain faithful to your tithes and offerings. So thank you guys for your willingness to give towards God's kingdom work. Yes. Would you please join with me in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your faithfulness, even in these unknown times. And Father, right now, I ask that you bless these offerings, Lord. I ask that you bless the people and their hearts that they're coming from, Lord. I ask that you just show your favor upon mm -hmm. us, Lord, and let us feel your peace and let us know that you are with us, God. I ask that you help us to continue to take your word throughout the city of Hollywood and to the world. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Happy Mother's Day to you at age 82 for your love, prayers, and sacrifice. I want to thank you. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I just wanted to say thank you for being such a kind, caring, loving, God-fearing mother and favoring a prayer war for me and my sister, Sharon. Thank you for all that you've done for us. We love you so much. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you so much for your godly example and for pointing me to Jesus. Vicki and I love you. I just want to wish my lovely wife and awesome mom to our children a great and blessed Mother's Day. I promise to make you a great breakfast and give you neck, back, and foot rubs all day Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. It is such an honor and a privilege to be your son. And I am so glad that you are my mom. And I just want you to know that Kelly and I love you to pieces. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, Mom. Uh, I'm sitting here in the hospital. I'll uh, be going home in a little bit this afternoon. Uh, Wish I, I felt better, wish I looked a little better, but uh, uh, I just wanted to tell you I love you and uh, I miss you so much. I wish I, I could be up there with you. I'm so sorry I wasn't up there during your surgery, but I'm so thankful to God for you and for what you have done for me uh, as a mom. And um, I just want to tell you I love you and I hope you have a great Mother's Day. Thank you, Mom. Love you. Bye. Hello, HCC family. We're the Mercedes family, and we just want to say Happy Mother's Day. Feliz Día de las Madres. Vicki, Amber wanted me to thank you for the way that you lovingly take care of her every single day. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I just wanted to um, thank God for my wife, for everything that she does for our family, and um, for always taking care of our daughter so well. She's an amazing mom, and um, I want everyone to know it. And I also want to know, uh, want my mom to know, too, as well, that she did a wonderful job, and um, I can't thank her enough for everything she's done for our family. God bless you all. Mom, I can't be more thankful than I already am to be blessed with a mother as loving and caring as you. Just want to say thanks for always being there to lean on for your support and wisdom. I love you very much and hope you have a beautiful Mother's Day. Hi, Tim and I just want to wish Mom and Mom and Tim very happy Mother's Day. Love you guys. Thank you for being godly women and leading us our whole lives in the right direction. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. 
Thank you for all you've done for me, for all the sacrifices you've made, and for all the ways you love me. You've been my steady rock, and thank you for always being by my side. You're such a wonderful mother, and I'm so blessed to have you. I give God thanks every day for you, Mom. I love you very much. Mom, I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. Thanks for teaching me the important stuff like loving God by loving people, especially little ones like this one. Miss you. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Grandma. Bye. Good morning, Hollywood Community Church family. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, the grandmothers, and even happy Mother's Day to the mother figures that are watching today. Maybe you might not be a biological mother, but God has used you in the life of someone, and you have ministered as a mother in their life. We want to let you know how much we love you and how much we appreciate you today, and that we thank the Lord for you. I want you to know this morning how much I miss you. I have to confess that Sundays have not been the same for Vicki and me. Quite frankly, sitting on a couch in my shorts with a cup of coffee, trying my best to sing along with Jonas and the team has been a little bit uncomfortable. It's also kind of weird watching myself preach on Sunday mornings. I don't know whether I'm supposed to take notes, whether I'm supposed to say amen, or whether I'm supposed to critique the message. I admit it's been a little awkward. I miss giving you a hug. I miss listening to our church family worship together. And I miss seeing you understand God's word and be encouraged by God's word. I wish I could tell you when we will meet again. Quite frankly, I can't. And, and let's admit, worship might be a little different when we come back together in a few weeks. We might have smaller groups. We might have to wear face masks and maybe give an air hug instead of a real hug. Here's what I know, though. I know that God has allowed all of this to happen for a purpose. I know that because God is sovereign. God, God never wastes a sickness. He never wastes a heartache. He never wastes a virus, and he never wastes a quarantine. He faithfully accomplishes his purpose, no matter what is happening in the world around us. Here's my question this morning. What if God allowed this to happen so that you and your family would grow spiritually stronger? Typically, we think, well, Brian, how can that happen? Because the church is not meeting together. Our kids are not involved in children's ministry. Our life groups can't meet in person. And man, do we miss seeing Brad's cool outfits on Sunday morning. <laughs> Quite frankly, though, I think that just maybe we've become too dependent upon others for our spiritual growth. Maybe some of you have become too dependent even on Hollywood Community Church or even on our preaching for your spiritual growth. I know that sounds like a heretical statement coming from a pastor, and I don't want you to get me wrong. I love the church. I believe in the church. I believe that all of us should actively attend, participate, serve, and give to the church. But I believe that many believers have substituted church attendance for their own spiritual growth. And many parents have even looked to children's ministry and children's ministry teachers to teach their children the Word of God instead of assuming the responsibility themselves. Here's what I believe today. I believe that God is calling us to personal revival. I believe that God is pushing us. I believe that he's challenging us to rethink the way that we lead our marriages, to rethink the way that we lead our children and the way that we lead our homes. He wants each of us to take the spiritual leadership in our families. 
That's what I believe the passage that we're going to look at today is talking about. So if you have your Bible, if you have your, your iPhone or your iPad, if you turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let me have a word of prayer and then we'll dive into the message today. Father, how I pray that you would take the word of God this morning and I pray that you would challenge us, challenge us as husbands, challenge mothers today. Lord, challenge us as families. Lord, help us to take the lead in our spiritual growth and in the spiritual growth of our families. And yes, Lord, use this virus, use this quarantine, Lord, as a vehicle for you to build your church as a vehicle, Lord, for our families to grow spiritually. And we thank you for what you're going to do. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Second Timothy was written by the Apostle Paul to Timothy. It's actually his second letter. You know that. The first one is First Timothy. First Timothy dealt with issues in the church, while Second Timothy is just a little bit more personal in nature. In 2 Timothy, Paul exhorts and encourages his son in the faith, his protege in the ministry, Timothy. And so we're here in 2 Timothy chapter 1, and so notice with me verses 3 and 4. Notice what Paul says and what the Holy Spirit of God says to us through Paul's words. Paul says, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, as I long to see you, as I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. Let me pause there for a second, because as I stated this morning, I deeply feel Paul's words. As you read those verses, I hope that you deeply felt them as well. And I would tell you the exact same thing that Paul told Timothy. I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I'd remind you today that Christian love and fellowship is one of the distinguishing marks of our faith. It was Jesus who said in John chapter 13 and verse 5, By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So let me encourage you, even during this time of quarantine, to find ways to share your love with your church family. Let me encourage you, even today, after the service, take the time to make a phone call, send a text message, post a note on someone's social media page, letting them know that you love them and you care for them. Take a plate of cookies and drop them off at a widow's door. Let's love one another. Paul loved Timothy and he expressed it to him. Notice in verse 5, Paul tells Timothy, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure dwells in you as well. So here, Paul reminisces how Timothy came to be a follower of Jesus. You see, Timothy wasn't Paul's convert. He actually became a believer because of the faith of his grandmother and his mother. That brings us to our first truth this morning. Our first truth is this, make Jesus the center of your family. And I would encourage you even during this difficult time to make Jesus the center of your family. That is what took place in the home in which Timothy was raised. You see, it was the devout faith of his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice pointed him to Jesus. Evidently, Lois and Eunice had become believers under Paul's ministry, and they had lovingly raised up Timothy to be a devout follower of Jesus himself. And now they passed their faith on to him. Catch this truth this morning. Your most important role in your family is to pass on your faith. Let me say it one more time. That's so important. Your most important role in your family is to pass on your faith. As you read through this letter, one of Paul's themes is the passing of faith from one generation to another. 
If you'll jump to the next chapter, chapter 2, in verse 2, Paul tells Timothy this. He says, And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Paul passing his faith to Timothy, Timothy passing his faith on to faithful men who will pass their faith on to others. Kind of tweak the verse just a little bit. Let me read it a little differently and see if you catch it. Paul could have said this, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to your children who will be able to teach their children also. As I read through this letter and I understand the, tor- the story of Timothy, I think it's interesting to note, especially on this day, that there was no male spiritual leadership in Timothy's home. Timothy's dad was a Gentile and not a believer. As a matter of fact, many think that he was an absentee father. Some think that he had abandoned the family, while others propose that he simply had no interest in spiritual things. Regardless of which is true, Lois and Eunice were the spiritual leaders of Timothy's home. Hey, on on this Mother's Day, I want to give a special shout out to single moms and ladies that I would call spiritually single moms. Moms who on their own are doing their very best to raise up their kids in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Moms, we thank God for you and we encourage you today. Don't lose heart. God can use you and God is using you to point your kids to Jesus. Here's the second truth though and it's this. Your relationship with Jesus is the most important factor in your family members becoming believers and faithful disciples. You see, it is your relationship with Jesus that will encourage them. It is your relationship with Jesus that will point them to him. Quite frankly, you cannot hope that your family will become something that you are not. You must love Jesus if they are going to love Jesus. You must be totally committed heart, soul, and mind, if you want them to be totally committed. You see, here's the simple truth. Your siblings may only come to Christ because of your faith. Your kids' discipleship begins with you. So I was preparing my message this past week. I received a video from April and Mark. And so if you'll allow me, let me just be a, pow, a proud grandpa, a proud papa for just a second. Watch this video of my grandson, Titus. Let's pray. Can you pray, Titus? Hello. Amen. Good boy. I love that video. Titus is just one and a half years old, and they are already, mom and dad are already teaching him the importance of talking with God. April, our daughter-in-law, is a third or a fourth generation believer. It's interesting, her grandfather was my Sunday school teacher when I was a little boy. Likewise, Mark can trace his faith in Jesus back several generations in our family. And now they are passing on their faith to their kids. Don't you long for that in your family? Maybe you come from a long line of believers. If that's the case, let me encourage you. First of all, thank God for that. And secondly, don't break the chain. Pass on your faith to the next generation. But you may be watching today and you might sit back and think, Brian, I'm a first generation believer. I'm the first person in my family who has actually become a follower of Jesus Christ. Well, I would encourage you, put Jesus first in your life and in the life of your family and trust him to do a work, not only in this generation, but in coming generations.
Make Jesus the center of your family. There's a second truth, though, that we see in these verses that relate to Timothy's life. And I I would say it this way. Make the Bible the foundation of your family. If you jump to chapter 3 of of this letter, uh, Paul uh, addresses Timothy and he he says things that are very familiar to us. And let me read three verses that are very familiar to all of us. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 14, Paul says this, But as for you, speaking to Timothy, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it. And how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work." Here's just a couple of thoughts that I would challenge you with this morning, and it's this, first of all. Be committed to studying the Scriptures. You you yourself, be committed to spending time in God's Word. Sadly, study after study in the last quarter of a century has revealed that American Christians increasingly don't read their Bibles The Ponce Foundation, which is a Christian market research organization, reported that 82% of Christian Americans only read their Bibles on Sunday. Boy, boy, that's a sad fact to me. 82% only open up their Bibles on Sunday morning. You see, the sad fact is that too many Christians either haven't been reading their Bible or are engaging it in a way that doesn't deepen their faith and doesn't change their lives. I love the words of Paul in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Paul says this, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Notice that word dwell. It has the idea of, of habitating, of putting down roots. Let God's word dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. The idea of God's word dwelling in your heart means to read it, to meditate on it, to memorize it, and apply it to your life. Be committed to studying the scriptures. But let me give you a a second challenge, and this might push you out of your comfort zone. But the second challenge is this. Be committed to teaching the scriptures. You may hear that this morning and say, whoa, 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 wait a second, Brian, that's not my job. That's the job of the pastor, or that's the job of the youth pastor, or that's the job of the children's ministry teacher. That, my friend, is where you are wrong. You see, Timothy's knowledge of the scriptures and his love for the scriptures came from his grandmother. It came from his mother. Go back to the text with me and and notice several things that Paul says in the text. In verse 14, he says, Continue in what you have learned from your mother and your grandmother. In, In verse 15, he says, From a child you have been acquainted with the sacred writings. You see, according to Jewish custom, the parent began instructing a child in the scriptures when the child reached five years of age. You see, it was Timothy's grandmother who took the word of God and taught him God's word. It was Timothy's mother who read him frequently God's word. I'm reminded of the words in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, that say this, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart and you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in the house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Let me pause for just a moment and speak directly to parents with children at home. Moms and dads, let me challenge you today to take the responsibility of teaching God's word to your kids. What if God allowed this quarantine to happen 
because he wanted you to step up and be the Bible teacher to your children. What if God allowed this to happen so that husbands and wives, you would grow in your faith, reading God's word? Moms and dads, let me encourage you, gather your kids together, sit them down, and read the Bible with them. Now, obviously, I'd make some recommendations. You know, don't start in the book of Leviticus. Uh, Read small passages of scripture. Explain what it means. Ask questions and let them ask questions. And I get it, some of their questions are going to be silly, and and some of their questions might not make any sense whatsoever, but expose them to the truth of God's Word. Give them a love for the Scriptures, and then pray with them. As I mentioned, maybe, just maybe, that is God's purpose. That is God's quarantine purpose for your family. I would also add, and we've said it over and over again, but Chase, our children's ministry director, has done a great job of making tools available for you as a parent, for you as a family. You can go to our website, www.ourhcc.org, and and there, on a weekly basis, are updated videos and Bible lessons, things that you can use at home to teach your children. Here's my challenge. Make the scriptures the foundation of your family. That's what Timothy's grandmother and mother did, and it forever changed his life. There's there's a third truth that we see in the passage that I want to mention this morning, and it's simply this. Make serving Jesus the DNA of your family. Let me read, go back to chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, notice verses 6 and 7. So as Paul is encouraging Timothy in his faith, and he, he commends his grandmother and mother for the influence that they had in his life, in verse 6 Paul says this, For this reason I remind you, I remind you to flan, fan the flame or fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and of self-control. Evidently, one of the reasons that Paul wrote this letter to Timothy was to encourage Timothy to use his gifts to serve the Lord. Some say that Timothy was not serving. He was still a believer, but he really wasn't using his gifts Others believe that maybe it was fear that kept Timothy from doing what God had given him the capacity to do. We're not exactly sure the background, but we do know that Paul is encouraging him to serve the Lord. Just let me remind you of the, of the phrases in verse 6, fan into flame the gift of God. Verse 7, don't operate in fear but operate in power, in love, and in self-control. If you jump down to verse 14, he tells Timothy, guard the good deposit that has been entrusted to you. What is Paul saying to Timothy? He's challenging Timothy to serve with the gifts and the abilities that God had given to him. So let me give you two challenges this morning. The first is this, emulate serving Jesus to your family. You see, if serving Jesus and serving others is going to be the DNA of your family, it begins with you. Man, when I was growing up, my, my parents emulated that for my brother, my sister, and I. Um, my parents taught in children's ministry for years My dad became the leader of the junior high ministry. In our church, it was a big church. Hundreds of junior high kids. My mom and dad visited guests who attended our church. They took care of widows, and they served in many other capacities. Even to this day, in their 80s, it's not unusual for mom to bake zucchini bread and go and drop it off at the door of widows, drop it off at the door of the homes of people in the church. I say all of that, I love serving because of the example of my parents. They not only pushed us to serve Jesus, but they emulated serving Jesus. 
Let me ask you today, how are you emulating serving Jesus to your family? The word emulate means to exemplify, demonstrate. How are you demonstrating to your children and those around you that you serve Jesus Christ? Man, man, there's so many practical ways that you can do it. Even during this pandemic, bake cookies for others. Buy and deliver groceries to a person who, for health reasons, shouldn't be going out of the house. Serve in our food pantry on, on Saturday mornings. Adopt an older person and visit them each week. I know you can't get close, but man, take a chair and go sit in their front yard and just spend a few minutes with them and pray with them. Cut someone's grass. Deliver care bags to the homeless on the streets. There are many ways that you can serve Jesus by serving others. And in your family, that begins with you. Emulate, exemplify, demonstrate serving Jesus in your family. And then secondly, I would say this, encourage serving Jesus by your family. Or in other words, encourage your family members to do that as well. Let me just give a shout out to two of our families. And we can mention so many families at Hollywood Community Church who are doing this. But let me give a shout out, first of all, to David and Sonia Bennett in our congregation. David and Sonia serve in so many ways. Not only are they deacons and part of our deacon team, and they serve in our youth ministry, but now their kids are serving in various capacities. They're serving in our food pantry. They're serving in our children's ministry. What is happening? Mom and dad emulate it, and then they encourage their children to do it. What a great family. I think of Alex and Laura Beringer, another family in our congregation, a family with a true servant's heart. Just yesterday, as I was finishing the message, I get a text from Alex that simply asked the question, what can I do to help you? I love that heart. Laura and their daughter Carrie work in the angels class. Both have spent hours taking care of our daughter Amber. You see, serving Jesus by serving others is the DNA of those families. Here's my message this morning, and it's very simply this. Don't waste a good quarantine. Don't waste a good pandemic. God's not up in heaven wringing his hands, wondering exactly what's going to take place in the days to come. God is sovereign, and God has allowed this to happen because he has a purpose for your life, and he has a purpose for the life of your family members. God is working in your life, and he's working in the life of your family. So my challenge is this. Put Jesus first. Make the Bible the foundation of your family. Read it and teach it and serve Jesus by serving others. I promise you, Hollywood Community Church family, that if we will take these truths and we will apply them in our own lives and in the lives of our families, God will do a fantastic work in your life and mine. And when we come back together, Whenever that is, whether it's in two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or whenever we're able to come back together, we're going to come back together and Hollywood Community Church is not going to be weaker. Hollywood Community Church is going to be stronger, it's going to be deeper, and it's going to be broader because God used this quarantine to accomplish his purpose in your life and in mine. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your word. Help us to be sensitive today to the truth of God's word. Help us to apply it to our lives. May Jesus be the center of our lives. May we realize the importance of pointing our children, our family members, our siblings, our parents to Jesus. And realize that our relationship with you is where it all begins Help us to emphasize God's word. Help us to not feel like we can live without it, like we don't need it in our lives. Drive us to your word each and every day. 
and help us to teach your word to our children and to our family members. And then help us to serve you, the only one who is worthy of our service. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Hope to see you soon. Have a great week.
your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he's for you 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 amen 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 Church, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy Mother's Day once again. Uh, we pray that the Lord just be with you, His favor be upon you. And uh, yeah, thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next week. Only Jesus, only Jesus, who is true.